I want to cover a few verses apart from our Sunday school class uh, so that people don't get the wrong picture about what doctrine is. Pastor was emphasizing something from psychology the other week, and we don't want for you to take a picture that Christ and his work was as if done by a man, because in fact he was God in the flesh. And so you have to keep that picture. 100% God, 100% man is the, you know, quick, terse, hackneyed formula from back when. And it certainly applies, and it, it's a good thought to keep in mind in how do you approach things. But ultimately, it's about uh, the word of God. So I'm going to read just a few verses here, four of them total, to give the full picture. First of all, the first words spoken by Christ that were recorded in Scripture, recorded in uh, Luke chapter 2. Uh, you don't need to turn to these. This is the passage where his uh, family lost sight of him after they went to Jerusalem and started uh, to go back to Nazareth, and it was like, uh-oh, Jesus isn't with us. What happened? And they found him in the temple. And he, Jesus, said unto them, how is it that she sought me? Wist ye not, or don't you know, that I must be about my father's business? So even at that point, what was he doing? The will of the father, the will of God. And how could he do otherwise? In fact, he was God in the flesh. The eternal word, John chapter 1, became flesh. But ultimately, you have God acting in that human body, being 100% human in a human body. He got tired. He got hungry. He got thirsty. But never, never sinned. Christ's words then from the Gospel of John. First of all, uh, chapter 4, verse 34. This is a passage concerning... Um, the, uh, the woman at the well, and his disciples came back and were asking, what's going on? Well, one of the statements he made there, Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. What was the work he was finishing? The work of God? The cross. All along during his earthly ministry, he emphasized, I'm going to the cross. And as it got closer, he emphasized it more. That was never a uh, news item to him. He was taking care of his father's business. In fact, to be more uh, complete in that statement, chapter 8 of the Gospel of John, in verse 29, Christ speaking, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. There was never any doubt as to what Christ was going to do, and he had no doubt of it. He knew exactly what he was about. What did he pray uh, uh, before uh, being betrayed in the garden? If it be thy will, there's the key phrase, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He wasn't clicking his heels, you know, oh boy, I get to go to the cross. It wasn't quite like that. But there is a verse, if I can find my marker again, Hebrews chapter 12. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Christ wasn't Overjoyed at the, ex, you know, at the uh, coming of the cross, but he was, for our sakes, quite willing to do so. It was not news to him. That's what I'm trying to emphasize there. We should not think that, oh, it was something that he got dragged into at the end. And I uh, wanted to be sure that we were clear on that, that point on that. No. Anyway, Acts chapter 17 Oh, just one other thing. Um, the, more than those two banks have gone 
into problem now. Uh, those banks are probably going to go away, the two that were mentioned the other week. And there are others that are struggling. Big banks are hustling to cover it. So, and this is part of the U.S. not covering the oil supply that needs to be covered. It, it started with the beginning of the Biden administration. Uh, the, the president made one big line of thing because he's not only going to cover the little guy, he's going to cover everybody in those banks. And then he said, oh, it's not going to cost the taxpayers anything. That can't happen. Reality is it has to be, oh, it's going to be in bank fees. Where are they getting the money from? Okay, so it's still going to be part of, this is a continuing thing of inflation. And it can be fixed very readily, affected anyway, helped by increasing the oil supply. And this administration hates that. They've got a different agenda altogether. So, yeah, we're still in tight times, and it will continue. And that very much is by design, even though they're in denial on it. But we are going to now cover from Acts. How many read Acts 17? Acts 17. Oh, okay. You did. I did. Okay, I didn't look. Good. One. We usually get one. It's not always the same person. Um, Acts 17, I literally am rep repeating myself on these. The, the Apostle Paul is continuing that second uh, missionary journey. And there's similarities now cropping up, ongoing basis. Uh, Paul's work, the work of the gospel, that is, and also the devil's work. And the devil's crowd will do the devil's work. And the thing about the devil's crowd is they don't have to compare notes even because ultimately they're doing what serves the world and they're in serving the devil in the world so they're going to do those kind of things that serve them. And this you see repeatedly. Uh, we look at the news today and you say anything that's uh, ethical, moral, absolutely squarely Bible, and the world's message is, ooh, you're hateful. No, they hate God because they serve the devil. That's the case. Routinely, habitually. And then they lie about it right up the chain of command to the top. They lie about it. Anyway, Paul continues now going to Thessalonica. Now he's in uh, northern Greece. I think it's still technically Macedonia. This would be where Alexander the Great was from, that part of Greece. Does that matter to you? No. Geographics, buff like me, I'm sitting there going, yeah, okay, I recognize it. And it still doesn't matter, it really doesn't. But, but that's where it's at. Verse 1, now when they had passed through Amphipolis and to Apollonia, and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where was a synagogue of the Jews. What's he doing again? He goes to the synagogue first. It's to the Jew first and then to the Greek after the Jews throw him out. But not right away, verse 2, And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. So he went back. They said, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Go back again. He's going to more and more places in the Bible, showing them in the Old Testament, because they didn't have the New Testament yet. I mean, they're literally doing the things that are written in the New Testament. So he's Reasoning with them from the scriptures, the scriptures they have at this point is still the Old Testament. There might be a, an epistle here and there, maybe one of the Gospels. They guess it when they were written. Generally, I treat it like the entire history in Acts, there's no New Testament. And then the rest of it, <laughs> it's always guesswork when they try to figure out just when what was written. There's a little bit of guesswork in it. Three Sabbath days, three Saturdays, because they were going to the synagogue for the synagogue services. And what did he uh, uh, tell them? Well, the gospel, verse 3, opening and alleging, you know, trying to make the case, 
that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, there's a quote from Paul, whom I preach unto you, is Christ, the Messiah. So he's pre uh, presenting to the Jews that Jesus Christ, the New Testament equivalent of Joshua from the Old Testament, that he is the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one. Verse 4, and some of them believed. There were Jews who trusted him. John chapter 1, he came unto his own and his own received him not, but that wasn't everybody, but as many as received the, him, the next verse says. It just wasn't the rule. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas. They kind of hung around like, okay, what, what, what more, 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 more. Come on, give me more. He had people who would listen. And of the devout Greeks, now if it says devout, I would expect they mean devout in the synagogue, which would make them Jewish proselytes. Well, before that, in order to follow God, a Gentile, non-Jew, would go to the synagogue or the temple if they were in Jerusalem to learn of you know, God's testament with man. And so here were these proselytes, Gentiles also. Verse 5, but the Jews which believed not. And so here we have that John chapter 1, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Boom. And there, there's a wild thing now. Of course they're Jews. They're of the law. It's all God's will. No, no, no. They're wicked. They're refusing God. So they're not following his word. Verse 5, but the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. Now, baser sort does not mean a vocal range, so it's not, you know, the bass section of a choir. I used to joke about that. We had guys in the choir, and then they wised up and let us go. Good idea. Nobody can hear us. We knew it. We, well, I could have sang flat, and the only thing I was going to do was throw off the women, and that was the biggest thing, my biggest concern. I knew my voice didn't carry. Um, we have great women's choir, great singing. Lewd fellows of the baser sort. These are the guys where like, oh, yeah, here, here, I'll give you some cash. What do I got to do? Give me money. What do I got to do? We want you to vote for our candidate. Go in there and tell them that they, they forgot to put you on the, on the voting rolls. Here's some money. Go and vote for our candidate. We're going to have a riot. Show up there and pretend to protest, and then when it gets dark, we're going to riot. Lewd, uh, lewd, baser sorts. Those guys on the corner, oh, they're just hanging around. Yeah, right, try walking by and keep your money in your pocket. Good luck. Okay, lewd fellows, the baser sort. And this, those law-abiding, oh, so concerned for the word of God types, wanted for their purposes. Yeah. The Old Testament. The Old Testament. Yes, it does. That's the point. That's out of the uh, Psalm twenty-three. Um, Psalm two. Uh, the statement to. Moses about one who would come after him, who would speak all the words of God? Yes. That sacrifice uh, of Abraham where he took Isaac, and, they, and he was about to sacrifice Isaac, his own son. Didn't Christ do exactly, or God do exactly that with Christ on the cross? Yes. So yes. And there's more that are more technical. When we quote it from the New Testament verses about the Old Testament, from the Old Testament that apply to Christ, don't think those suddenly just, oh, yeah, there's this. The apostles after Pentecost, chapter 5, they were about the word. What were they doing? They were going back through and saying, okay, when he said this, this applies to this verse here. So this doctrine springs from this Old Testament verse. And they were literally uh, reviewing 
what Christ had been saying to them during his earthly ministry. Okay? That was the whole point of it. Uh, the Gospel of John, he told them they would, be remi- they would remember everything. The Holy Spirit would help, would bring to their, to, to their remembrance the things that he had said. They didn't remember him too well while he, he was there with them, but after he left, the Holy Spirit helped them. So, yes. You had to start somewhere. They didn't have all the writings, you know, they didn't, the week after uh, his crucifixion, go and write all the New Testament. So, yes, it did take a little bit of time, humanly speaking. The word was certain, but they had to pen it first for everybody to have scripture for the New Testament. But it was there. And the Apostle Paul, again, uh, as I've said before, you read in Galatians, the history for him personally, I'm finishing off the last bit of Colossians right now, sorry. But he, um, the Apostle Paul, at one point, went to Arabia. He went into the wilderness, basically. He had a wilderness wandering of his own. A little time to sit there and look at his Bible again, the Old Testament, and say, this is what I know now, and this is what we're missing as Jews of the Old Testament concerning this coming of Christ. So that's what that was about. So anyway, they brought these lewd fellows, verse 6, and when they, had, uh, they went looking for the apostle Paul uh, in the house of Jason, one of the people there, when they found them not, verse 6, they drew Jason and certain men unto the rulers of the city, crying, these, have turned, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. So they had heard, Uh Uh-oh, there's trouble. There's a conspiracy of the Apostle Paul and these Christians. No, they were, the Apostle Paul was taking his freedom as a Roman citizen and telling people about Christ. But the world hates that. And mind you, we turn the world upside down when we tell them they have an ultimate judge of all to answer to. They don't want to hear that. When we tell them, as the scripture says, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear, all religions lead to God. No, it doesn't. Trusting Christ leads to God. Trusting him and nothing and no one else. His penalty, his payment, he took it all on. He took our debt on him, and he paid it. Trust him. If we don't do that, there is no other way. None other name under heaven given among men. Ecumenism, false, very false. So we turn the world upside down when we look at the Bible and say what God says is up is up. The world says that the evil is good and the good is evil. But we call them by their proper name. If it's perverted, it's perverted. It doesn't matter how much people love it. Perversion is perversion. There is an absolute, and we will all answer to him. And that's actually part of this chapter. So they, they leave Thessalonica and go to Berea. And I, I've seen churches named the Berean Baptist Church. I like that. First of all, it's two B's. Second of all, this is a reason why they say Berean. 10, 11, and 12. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night under Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews, first to the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They conducted themselves like they were children of the king. Not power mad, But children of the king, the honor of the king is to search out a matter. When a person properly searches out a matter, they show that kind of nobility. It doesn't come by genetics or birth, but is a matter of the mind and heart. These were more noble than those of Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. This is what Christ told the Jews. He told them, search the scriptures. John chapter 
5. Uh, For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. He was talking to the Jews about that Old Testament. Verse 12, therefore many of them believed. All they had to do was read, it was there. The testimony of what Christ did, what happened, death, burial, and resurrection. The Messiah had come. He had paid the penalty for sin. There was a path in following and trusting him. Trust him. Therefore, many of them believed. They trusted, they had faith, they believed. Also, the honorable women, verse 12 there, uh, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. But here we go again. When the Jews of Thessalonica, there were no phones. There was no internet. There was no telegraph. No Pony Express. But here come the Jews of Thessalonica. How? They inquire, okay, which direction did they go? They're going to Berea. That's the road to Berea. Let's pursue Paul. And these servants of the devil had nothing better to do than knock off work to chase cross country to chase down Paul. Conspiracy? On their part, it was just, oh, we're concerned citizens. We, we want to see that, you know, no disinformation is supplied to people. They're still sorting out how many FBI agents squashed free speech over the last few years. Regardless of your, of your opinions, you know, um, yeah. Free exchange of information is needful. The gospel does not spread in an environment where the government crushes free communication. Ask people who are Christian and living in communist countries. It's a problem. We read a missionary letter a week before last. It's a problem. Churches in other countries being quashed because communism will not allow the gospel. Just how it operates. And here come these Jews, unbelieving, born to it, had the heritage, had the DNA, they're Jewish, didn't matter. So verse 14, then immediately the brethren sent away Paul, got him out of there. That was the one they were coming after. The rest stayed there. I think uh, they could maybe function within the, the people there in Berea and encourage them without being that lightning rod that Paul was because they knew him. So Paul goes to Athens. And this is just a great preaching message here. Paul goes there and looks about. He, he went into the, into the synagogue with the Jews, therefore, uh, verse 17. Again, first to the Jews. And after a bit then, uh, it mentions at the end of verse 17, and in the market daily with them that met with him, then in the marketplace certain of the philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him. Here come the philosophers. We're so wise. We know all of that. We've got, you know, evolution figured out. We know the universe. Billions and billions and millions and millions because then we can pretend we know something and we don't even know what the weather's going to be next week. And in their wisdom, they went opposite directions, but they were perfectly happy, kind of like the Pharisees and the Sadducees who differed on a lot of things and were contrary in a lot of things. They were happy, the Epicureans and the Stoics here, to meet with them. The Epicureans basically lived on that uh, one... Bible verse, you know, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. That was their attitude. Oh, yeah, everything, man, just bring it on. Gluttons. And then there were the Stoics. Oh, no, no, deny the flesh. Starve yourself. Live miserably. Because all of that anguish and anxiety is good for the soul. 
They were basically monastic Roman Catholics, I think. <laughs> you know, we're going we're gonna to live in that tower and we're hardly going to see people and some of us aren't even going to speak uh, for years on end and it's going to be good. And they meet with him and they're sitting there going, huh, what? And they do mention, he seemeth to be, last part of verse 18, a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. So in that, they were like the Sadducees. Oh, there is no resurrection. Yeah, God said there was. They didn't want to believe the Bible. It didn't fit their philosophy. So it says they took him unto Areopagus. How about Areopagus? Pronounce it like I want to pronounce it. It's not right. I'm sure that's the hillbilly roots of mine. Areopagus. Uh, the first part, the Areo, means Aries, uh, and it's talking about Aries Hill. It's a, it's a geography. And so they were sitting there going, huh, okay, verse 21. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to, hear, uh, to tell or to hear some new thing. Ooh, it's new. It's new. Madison Avenue gone mad. It's new. It must be good because it's new. No, it just means people haven't figured out the harm in it yet. It's new. So he preached unto them God. Verse 22, last few words. In all things, you are too superstitious. Now, that's not like, uh, you know, throwing salt over your shoulder, all that sort of thing. But he's saying you're worshiping everything. You're ecumenical. You're, you're pantheistic, you know, Drop a new name. Sure, build a temple to him, but at least build a statue. Well, they did. Uh, verse 23, last uh, half of verse 23. Um, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God, just in case. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Here's the one you don't know, and he's the God of all. And that's now the burden that Paul has taken on. The unknown God, and I'm going to tell you, it's, it's everything. He's all. Verse 24, first of all, his uh, being a creator. God ha uh, that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. If one thing the, the Greeks had figured out is build a temple to somebody. And he's telling them, you're wasting your time. Ooh, that's inflammatory. That's hate speech. There's a reason why the big noise today is hate speech, because people who don't want to trust God, don't want to believe God, don't want to humble themselves before God, don't want to hear the truth. And so it's hate speech. So they could justify hating the word of God, gospel, and the God of the gospel. Verse 25 again. Or, well, picking up at verse 25. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing that he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Verse 26. And hath made of one blood all nations of men. We're all one blood. We talk about races. There is one race. It's a human race. The rest is just divisions. Case in point, they talk about, say, creatures like, uh, one I'm aware of is two different species of, uh, what is it, a um, squirrel out in the Midwest, Southwest. They're on either side of the Grand Canyon, okay? And they said, oh, they're different species. Are they? Well, it turned out they weren't. They just had the Grand Canyon in their way, and some of them were of one color and some another. That's all. Different skin, different, different skin, different uh, fur for the squirrel. Later on, somebody actually bothered to check, and yet, nope, they crossbreed. They're just fine. They're the same species. There's one race. It's a human race. After that, it's not this group, this group, this group. No, no, no. It's truly speaking. It's a panorama. It's, you know, a rainbow properly used and, and observed. One blood, verse 26 again in chapter 17 of Acts. 
and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. And I've heard this misused to say, oh, he only wants people to live in this part of the world and that's their part and they better... Yeah, meantime, we Europeans... Oh, by the way, all of us of European ancestry need to go back to Europe. That's what it means anyway. That's not... What he's saying there is, you go ahead and live in the middle of the ocean... Have fun. By the way, the uh, closest soil is two miles down. Good luck. You know, no. Habitation, what? Where, where's the land, okay? After the flood, not all of the earth was usable. Still isn't. Climate change? Climate's been changing since way back. They want to ignore that, but that's a fact. Climate changes. It's made of one blood, all nations of men. Verse 27, why did he do that? And say, you're going to live here, here, here. I'm, I'm going to keep certain bands of area where you can live. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. The gospel is for all. And it's the burden of people who don't know who God is to seek him. That's the gospel. That's the message. And there are pseudo-Christian philosophies, not scripture, that try to say otherwise. Accept no substitutes. God's word is whosoever will. Whosoever. Christ died for the sin of the world. And the only sin that will take somebody to hell is not trusting him because the payment was made and we're under God's condemnation until we put our trust in the only sacrifice for sin. And we have in this area a major religion that says you can work your way past that. Not happening. The Old Testament statement to the Jews who had all the sacrifices in the temple and God said, do this. But if they thought that those works allowed them to do whatever wickedness and they could live for the devil, Christ's words, all your righteousnesses are as, or Christ, God's words, all your fil uh, righteousnesses are as filthy rags, bloody, disgusting, polluted. First, person needs to trust Christ and then look to God for what would you have me to do, Lord? To sit there and say, I'm going to work my way around it and I'm going to do this stuff over here and I'll pile that up and that, that'll distract them and I'll be okay for heaven. Not happening. So here, he's telling, he tells these Greeks, everybody's one blood. Don't take some cultural egotism in this. It's not going to work. He's the creator of all. And we have the burden to seek him. So then in that, verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. He's not saying God is the universe. He's saying Christ, Colossians from, uh, from Colossians, Christ is the creator. All things were created by him and for him. Colossians chapter 1. For as much as we are the offspring of, Oh, okay, yeah, for we are also his offspring, is the last part of verse 28. Verse 29, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, he's our creator, not that we're children of God in, in the thing that we sense. Having a generally Christian uh, uh, country, we understand. You're talking, oh, that's, he's a child of God. Okay, there's something different there, right? Trust in Christ. For as much, but this here we're talking about by creation. We're all created of God. Um, Psalm 139 is one of the notes I have here as, as a creator. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that God, the Godhead is like unto, uh oh, here we go back to all of their paganism and idols and, and uh, temples. The God is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed, verse 31, because he hath appointed a day in the which 
he will judge the world in righteousness by that man, the God-man Christ, took on flesh, that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. So that testimony of God, that in the grace of God, he sent a penalty payer for all of mankind. And then because of that, then what? Repentance. Turn. That doesn't mean turn over a new leaf. Okay, I've got to do all of these various things and the penance and the, no. Simply, you come to God on his terms. We trust him, his payment, what Christ did for us at the cross. And we believe him. That's salvation. We need then simply to be moved to publicly. Hmm. Just a simple, yep, I did. Okay. Not an oration. Really believing something to be so will move you to say, eh, yeah, that's wrong. I know what's right, and that ain't right. This is what's right. So Paul here finally then is saying, all of your statues, yeah, <laughs> they aren't going to get you anything. Your righteousnesses are filthy rags. None of it's going to have any standing. God is going to judge. It ain't going to be for you to say, oh, I give myself an A+. Plus. You ever had a, a class where the teacher would do, like, what grade do you think you should get? Okay, A plus, tell me I'm wrong. You asked me. Ah, uh -huh, I did that, sure. That was a college class. I'm like, seriously, dude? Okay, A plus. There's a liberal arts class anyway. Everybody gets an A. I think I did pass. I took it pass fail because I took the class and the teacher was like, oh, you're what? Okay, forget it. Taking a pass fail, I don't trust you. <laughs> Your measurement has no measurement. Um, but God, at the judgment seat, he will judge the works of those who have trusted him. The penalty of Christ will be put upon our account so that our works for him, there will be a lot of wood, hay, and stubble that will burn up. Do we just serve ourselves all our days as a child of God? Well, there's going to be nothing to walk into heaven with. But gold, silver, precious stones, not physical in this world, but those things that have that kind of standing in heaven because they have eternal value. Those things will stand to our account. But then there's the white throne judgment. And in that... All of the lost, including those that have already spent time in hell, and they'll be cast into the lake of fire forever. The judgment of God. So he's not telling them all that here, I see. But that's ultimately what they're looking at. So, verse 32, just like with the Sadducees, and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Ooh, resurrection of the dead. Nobody says that's for real here. You say it's for real. We want to hear. That doesn't mean they, they are trusting it. They just want to hear more. They're curious. Curious is not trusting. Curious is, I'm still open. So certain men clave to him and believe. Verse 34, it mentions Dionysus of the, uh, the Areopagite. So he was one, somebody who took care of Mars Hill. Might have been one of the Mars priesthood. Yeah. So there, there was that group that would believe, but just a few. Paul's message didn't uh, mince words. And he certainly didn't sit there and say, well, whatever you believe is good. Just, you know, be happy in the, in the faith. What's the faith? Oh, what do you believe? Oh, that's good for me. No. He was very specific. Christ and his crucifixion and God, Christ really, in his power, resurrection, re resurrecting from the dead. That's the gospel. God defeats death. We need to trust him. And that's the message of God. Uh, we'll cover chapter 18 next week. Questions, comments?
Anything? Okay. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, for uh, your blessing. Lord, may we be mindful of the certainty that you uh, show in your word, Lord, that we would keep that focus, that we would choose our words, but we would not back away from the truth and from the certainty we have in you, Lord. We pray for your blessing in this in Christ's name. Amen.